It's time for Giants kickoff. Brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. The Giants return home to MetLife Stadium to take on the undefeated Carolina Panthers. This after the Giants recorded a come from behind victory over the Miami Dolphins on the road in Miami last Monday night. To be able to finish the game with the ball in our hands was a really uh, fulfilling tonight because we, we talked about playing 60 minutes. We hadn't been doing that. We hadn't been finishing. That was a major goal and we did that. It certainly is good to win and uh, it does keep us alive. Yes, indeed. How are you doing, everyone? I'm Russ Salzberg, and welcome once again to Giants Kickoff, brought to you by Toyota, our pregame look at the New York football Giants as they enter their Week 15 matchup with the Carolina Panthers. And I'm Duke Castiglione. Thanks for joining us as the G-men who sit in a three-way tie atop the NFC East at 6-7 and seven, look to keep their playoff hopes alive against one of the NFL's elite teams. And you can catch all the action from this weekend's matchup, Panthers-Giants, from MetLife Stadium tomorrow right here for you on Fox 5 beginning at 1 p.m. And don't forget, immediately following each and every Giants game, you want to flip right over to our assistant station, My9, for Giants Post Game Live, the official post game show of your New York Giants. Not only are the Giants taking on an undefeated team in the 13-0 Panthers, but they're also facing the league's top MVP candidate and Carolina quarterback Cam Newton. But like they say, you have to be in it to win it. Here's a closer look at the contest in our game day preview. Game day preview brought to you by Tri Honda. Hurry to your local Tri Honda dealer for great deals on the 2015 models. Uh, they're good. They're a good team. Uh, offense is scoring a lot of points. Their defense uh, is not letting a uh, team score a lot of points. So they got a lot of good players, good scheme. We just got to have a great week of preparation, go out there and find a way to make some plays. Eli was the key catalyst in Monday night's road victory over the Dolphins, setting a Giants franchise record by completing 27 of 31 passes, an 87% single game best. Uh, we kept Eli clean and we was able to see, you know, what he looks like when he when he's able to stay clean. So um, we left some yardages out there. You know, don't 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 kid yourself. Uh, we got a lot of growth uh, left in us, so we got we to make sure we come out and put our best foot forward against a great team. I think we're at our best when, yeah, when we spread the ball around, everybody's in the mix, and I'm just going through my progressions and my reads, and uh, guys are getting open. I think we move uh, pretty well offensively once we do do that. Uh, um, it's pretty much at, at will once everyone's involved and everyone's in the groove and, and getting confident within the offense and just going down there and put points on the board. After already clinching its third straight division crown, remaining undefeated isn't the only thing Carolina will be playing for this week. I mean, as far as we're concerned, this week coming up is important. We'd love to be able to, 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 to have home field all the way through, and the only way for us to do that is, is to approach it one game at a time and, and, and play to win those games. From a defensive perspective, containing one of the league's most dangerous dual threat players in Cam Newton is priority number one. First off, it starts with having your eyes in the right spot, taking the right steps. Because if you don't, everybody's seeing what he can do. So we definitely know. Like, he's a good quarterback, man. <laughs> you know, you look at him on tape, you know, there's a reason why they're undefeated or whatever. But us guys, we got to get to him better up front. Um, we got to play the zone reads better um, as defense ends. Um, it's going to be a tough game, you know, for us. So and we're going to do the best we can. I know that. All right, joining me now, the man who draws up the big blue game plan, that is head coach Tom Coughlin, front and center with me in this week's Coach's Corner. Coach's Corner, brought to you by your Tri-State Ford dealers. For great deals, visit TriStateFord.com. Tom, what kind of psychological lift has it been for your team coming to work this week, knowing that they, in their minds, yeah, we can get the job done, come from behind and finish your game? Well, the finish thing was the big thing. We've been talking about that for so long. And to be able to do it the way we did it, you know, a couple of defensive stops at the end, the first time the offense didn't go with it, the second time they did go with it, and we finished the game with the ball in our hands. That was all good stuff. So very positive from that standpoint. But it was great to win, and I think that, that confidence will help us. Of course, it's a very short week. They're, you know, very excited about Carolina coming in here. The Carolina front seven is a very physical bunch. 
How does Eli and company handle that? We've seen a bunch of physical fronts, including the one we just played against. So we've had a lot of those opportunities. They have outstanding players. They play hard. Um, their offense has kept the ball so that their defense has been on the sideline a great majority of the time, which rests them up and they're even more powerful. But this is a good group and they do come hard and their linebackers are very good and they add them to the mix. All right, and what about your defense dealing with Cam Newton and company? Well, that's that's a major problem. You know, you have a team that has all kinds of numbers, all kinds of stats, whether they're fourth in, in the league in this, fifth in the league in that, you know, time of possession, points off turnovers. They've played their game very well together. They're plus 18. Uh, they've gotten the ball at uh, 25 times in plus territory and scored 18 of those 25. And uh, Newton gives you a lot of problems. You know, he's a very athletic young man, very skilled. They run the ball with him more than just his own read. You know, he's got the quarterback sweep. He's got the counters inside. He's got the draw plays and so on and so forth. He will ad lib. He'll pull the ball down and run with it. Gives him more time to get rid of the ball. Olsen's having a huge year for them. Their line up front is doing a good job. With your focus being on getting into the postseason, you and your team could care less about them being undefeated, spoiling their season. Well, we have to understand we have a great stake in this game, too, and we're interested in our circumstance and our situation, so you're right. Still to come on Giants Kickoff, brought to you by Toyota. Russ finds out why Giants rookie tight end Will Ty plays each and every NFL game with a chip on his shoulder. Plus, our Giants insider Paul Dottino tells Duke what it will take for Big Blue to beat MVP candidate Cam Newton and the undefeated Carolina Panthers next. Giants kickoff brought to you by Adorama, official electronics retailer of the Giants. I'm Dwayne Harris with the New York Giants. You're watching Giants kickoff on Fox 5. Brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. All right, welcome back, everybody. He began the season as a practice squad player, but after injuries hit the Giants' tight end position, this local product became a starter. Number 45, Willie Ty, is the focus of this week's player profile. Player profile brought to you by Chrysler. A couple of firsts this year for you. You become the first Stony Brook product to play in the NFL when you did it in October, and Monday night, you become the first Stony Brook player to score a touchdown in the NFL. How's that all make you feel? Makes feel on top of the world, that's for sure. Um, it feels good. I just don't believe it, um, most of it yet, but it feels good, definitely. Willie, what's it like for you to be an undrafted player now in the NFL, turning people's heads, making them say, hey, this guy can really play? feels good. Um, it's like a long time coming, like going to Florida State, like I didn't really get a chance, but coming here and being able, being able to get a chance and showing that I can play, like, feels real good. You mentioned Florida State. You spent three years there, you hardly play, you go to Stony Brook, you become a star. Case of maybe a big fish in a little pond, a good lesson? Be patient, no matter where you go, um, you can make something happen. Uh, you continue to work hard and you can um, attain any goal you have. Because you went undrafted, do you play with a chip on your shoulder? Definitely play with a chip on my shoulder. You have to. Everybody wants to get drafted, so why not me? But if you don't, you're okay. I'm going to play even harder every down. Remember that. Keep that memory in your mind. Was there a turning point, Willie, in this season when you said to yourself, hey, I can play here. I belong. Probably the, um, the Saints game. When I uh, finished out the game, second half, after they went down, I felt it more. I'm in the right place. I belong here. What do you think your game needs the most improving on? Um, probably definitely the blocking and just consistently um, with the play calling, just knowing the plays, make sure I'm lined up in the right spot, but um, I'm doing pretty well now. You're basically a local guy from Middletown, Connecticut. You're playing in your own backyard. Does that add pressure to you? That definitely gives pressure because a lot of people from Connecticut are Giants fans, so it's like, oh, hey, you got to help, help us out now, help us out now, everywhere you can. I'm like, all right. <laughs> what about this team for the rest of the season moving forward? Um, we see that we can finish. We see that we can finish and it makes us feel better and um, makes us better for every week and uh, we want to be great for every week and continue to be great and finish out strong. All right, when it comes to matters of the Big Blue, this guy is always in the know. He's the Giants beat reporter for WFAN Radio. Paul Dottino is our Giants insider. All 
right, Paul, what do the Giants need to do to beat the undefeated Panthers? Well, you know, Duke, they are a very sound team, are the Panthers all across the board. They don't make a lot of self-inflicted mistakes. They don't kill themselves. So the Giants have two areas they need to maximize their advantages in. Special teams for sure. Dwayne Harris, big-time return guy who has had a number of game-breaking returns this year. And also, when you look at Cortland Finnegan as the new nickelback on the Panthers' defense, he is the guy most susceptible to giving up big plays. I don't think it's any secret the Giants' defense has struggled all season. So how do they go about containing a player as dynamic as Cam Newton? Cam Newton runs the ball probably as well as any quarterback has in the last decade or so. He's extremely powerful. Uh, he's big. Uh, he has a mentality to get that extra yard. Um, you know, it's very, very difficult to deal with. So what you want to do is make sure you contain him in the pocket. You don't want him getting out. You don't want him getting rushing lanes to where he can get ahead of steam going after that second and third step because now he's a load to bring down. Can the Giants offense match the firepower of the Panthers? Oh, I don't think there's any question about that. Look, Duke, Odell Beckham Jr. has six consecutive 100-yard games. That is a Giants franchise record. They have tried to cover him. Opposing defenses have in every way imaginable and he continues to do what he does. Uh, the Giants know they've always got that in their back pocket. They've got a chance at the big play to explode at any time that can keep them in a ball game. So yes, I do think the Giants could keep up with Carolina. Talk a little bit more about Odell Beckham Jr. and the success he's had. I mean, it seems he amazes us every week. Well, he does, but it's not just the physical stuff now. Now it's also the mental yeah. stuff. You know, it was the other day in Miami when Eli and Odell had their own meeting after all the team meetings had concluded. And Eli showed something to Odell and said, look, if we get this look on the field, I'm going to throw you that bomb. I'm going to hit you for that long touchdown. Those two guys communicating outside of the usual X's and O's. And what happened? Odell caught the touchdown pass that wound up proving to be the game winner in the fourth quarter. Still to come on Giants kickoff, brought to you by Toyota. Giants running back Rashad Jennings takes to a different kind of stage to raise funds for his charitable foundation. Then we test the members of the Big Blue on their knowledge of the NFL team that calls Carolina home. Still ahead. I'm Cullen Jenkins with the New York Giants and you're watching Giants kickoff on Fox 5. Brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. Any team who's undefeated this late, um, they didn't do it by accident. Um, so, you know, they, they've done a good job. We got to be able to, to defend it, uh, make sure we know what we're going to do to attack them. But, you know, this is a, another week, another opportunity to keep things rolling on this side. We're worried about us. Everything's still right in front of us, and uh, they're the next opponent in the way. All right, welcome back. The Giants host the Carolina Panthers tomorrow at MetLife Stadium, and you can watch all the action right here on Fox 5, beginning for you at 1 p.m. And don't forget, immediately following each and every one of our Giants games, be sure to flip right over to our sister station, My9, for Giants Post Game Live. And this week's Giants Among Us, Rashad Jennings takes to a different kind of stage in support of his foundation. I wanted to bring people together with laughter to raise money for the Rashad Jennings Foundation. Because I had a reader comprehension deficit growing up, and if it wasn't for somebody taking the time to explain how important reading is, um, I probably wouldn't be having this conversation with you today. Hey, welcome to Rashad Jennings Foundation first annual John Knight of Comedy. So instead of us throwing away our hat, our socks, our gloves from a game, whatever it is, autograph it, make sure your number's on it. I collect all the items, I take it to the local schools who want to partner with the Rashad Jennings Foundation reading program. <laughs> Kids come in, they get a book, they read the book, they return the book, they take a test on the book. If they score 80% or above, their name goes inside of a hat. At the end of each month, the librarian pulls the name out of the hat. That kid gets to pick the first item. If the school has 10 items, there's 10 winners. How you doing? Ew, you the day is finally here. We made it. it. All, all the work, we get Check to see what happens. Awesome. Oh, yeah. 
said Richard has a huge heart for the community and um, he loves to serve and always give back. You know, not everybody is figuring out ways to give back and um, Rashad has definitely been focused on that. Very open-minded, open-hearted person. It's like going down the tunnel right now, so it's almost showtime. You know, I've been seeing all the familiar faces and friends and celebrities kind of coming out and support and it's humbling uh, when you can get so many people to come out and take time to come out uh, to support a cause like this. So I'm excited. What you see here is the good side of athletic success. I myself aspired to play pro football but was cut 13 times. <laughs> but give it up for Rashad Jennings, everybody. The funny thing is that a kid rather have a funky, dirty, crusty sock worn by a professional athlete that they can be like, dang, he really wore this, <laughs> than having something brand spanking new. I'm trying my best to change communities. Uh, I'm trying to win championships and make a difference in everybody's life that I encounter. Still to come on Giants Kickoff, brought to you by Toyota. Russ and Duke with their picks for tomorrow's crucial game. Then we put the members of Big Blue to the test when it comes to their knowledge of the Carolina Panthers. Look at you. I'm on it. Oh, I'm you're cooking. <laughs> ah. Know your foe is straight ahead. Giants kickoff brought to you by Ticketmaster and the NFL Ticket Exchange, the only official ticket exchange of the NFL. Hi, I'm Shane Vereen with the New York Giants, and you're watching Giants kickoff on Fox 5. Brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. Try to sneak into these playoffs and, and you know, get a clean slate and start from there. But um, first, you got to start by taking care of Carolina Panthers, 13-0 um, team, arguably one of the best teams in the league right now. Um, and, and they're playing at a very high level. So it's definitely going to be uh, quite a game come Sunday. All right, it's now that time again to challenge members of the Big Blue on their knowledge of this week's opponent, the Carolina Panthers, in this week's Know Your Foe. Know Your Foe, brought to you by your Tri-State BMW Centers. Visit us at TriStateBMW.com. The Carolina Panthers represent which state? North Carolina, South Carolina, or both? Both. Both. There you go. True or false, Willie? The Panthers have never appeared in a Super Bowl. True or false? That would be uh, false. False it is. In 2003, when the Panthers made their only Super Bowl appearance, their head coach was a former Giants defensive coordinator. Was it A? Romeo Crennel, B, Perry Fuel, or C, John Fox? A. Go with C, final answer. Final answer, John yeah. Fox. <laughs> See, yeah. you did your homework. The name of the current Panthers head coach is A, Ron Swoboda, B, Ron Rivera, or C, Ron Darling? It's B. Ron Rivera. Hey. This former Carolina Panthers quarterback led the Giants into a Super Bowl. Was it A, Jeff Hosteller? Was it B, Kerry Collins? Or was it C, Scott Bruner? B. B it was, Kerry Collins. Three. A female Panther is known as A, a lady cat. B, a she panther. Or C, a panther S. Hmm. I'm gonna go with the lady cat. I'm gonna go with C, final answer. Ah! <laughs> boy, oh boy. Know your phone. Well, Russ, I think the Giants pull off the upset at home and continue their playoff push. I have the G-Men winning in this one, 17-14, a familiar score against an undefeated team. Yeah, it sounds good, Duke. Well, logic, you know, says the Panthers should win, but the heart says the Giants. So I'm going to go with you, Duke, your final score in this one. I see it, Giants winning in a shootout 31-30, to and you can watch all the game action tomorrow at 1 p.m. right here for you on Fox 5. And don't forget, following each and every Giants game, you want to be sure to flip right over to our sister station, My9, for Giants postgame live. That's a wrap on this week's edition of Giants Kickoff. For our entire Giants Kickoff crew, I'm Duke Castiglione. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone. And I'm Russ Salzberg, and don't forget to have yourselves a terrific Giants football Sunday.